it'd be nice if, if a world, if we could actually just appreciate that we've been given this opportunity to do a bit of a reset and to think about the fact that the planet will not keep going if we don't make changes. Hey Lawrence. Hey Josh. I've been thinking about the podcast. How about in the first series we focus on the pandemic? Yeah, and in each episode we can ask our guests how it's been affecting them and what they do. We could ask people to join in with the hashtag POSNegative. How would we introduce it each week? We'll just say, welcome to Positive Negative. In our 12th episode, I talk with Kelly Edney. She runs a small domestic cleaning business in the south of England. I was keen to find out how her and her staff were managing, as well as the effects the pandemic and lockdown might have had on their customers. We spoke on Sunday the 17th of May, the end of the first week that saw lockdown restrictions lifted slightly in England. My name is Kelly Edney. Um, I am predominantly a mum, but I'm also the owner and managing director of a company called The Dust Dolly, which is a cleaning company. And whereabouts are you? Uh, We are based in Haven in Hampshire, so right on the south coast. And how long have you been doing that? We are in year 10 now. Oh, wow, okay. So, yeah, decade. And do you have lots of people working for you? Still kind of fairly small? or We've got 10 people at the moment, but we worked out, actually, funny enough, the other day how many we've had in total. We've had 26 dollies altogether in wow. the duration. And so do you want to tell us a little bit about what impact that um, the lockdown and everything has had on, on you personally, first of all, but then um, y- your company and your business and, yeah. From a personal point of view, we were in the middle of moving house. And so it was all a bit tricky because we knew that everything was starting to shut down. Things like solicitors and uh, mortgage brokers and things like that. So for me personally, as a family, um, we've been quite stressed in regards to things just stopping but we were very fortunate that we managed to complete on our house the week before lockdown wow um so we are living with my mother-in-law at the moment right because we couldn't get anywhere to rent quick enough and our new house wasn't ready so from a point of view of how it's affected us i'd probably say it's actually been in a good way actually Mm. because we are with Paul's mum and unfortunately his father-in-law died last December so rather than her being on her own yeah, right, we've yeah. arrived so it's been um yeah it's been nice actually to be together yeah um so yeah it's been it's been tricky but it, it's working and so with the house it's just your new house is kind of does it still need to be completed or is it sitting there empty? Yeah, so our house is being built. So um, obviously one of the things that happened during the beginning of the lockdown was a lot of um, construction sites got closed. So our house construction and uh, programme stopped. So our house is built, but the internals aren't ready. So at the moment we don't actually have a completion date or an exchange date. We're just sat waiting. Mm. Um I think the sites have gone back a couple of weeks ago, so fingers crossed things should start moving now, but I think we're looking at about a three or four month additional delay on the original completion date. So when when was the original then? Uh end of May. Right, right. And we've been told that it could possibly be October now. Right. So So how are you how are you feeling about that? Um not it's 50 50 really obviously it'd be nice to have been it'd be nice to have been in the house in the next couple of weeks and obviously get settled in and then have the summer in the house but we are in quite a nice fortunate position because we are living with our my mother-in-law um we don't have the financial stress of a mortgage because obviously that went when we completed on the house Mm -hmm. um so we are fortunate and i'm really grateful for that for being in that position um we originally didn't want to go and rent or we couldn't find anywhere to rent because we only really needed six months. But actually I think there must've been a bit of divine intervention because we would have needed a lot longer and we would have to sign a much bigger contract. So actually financially it could have been quite, um, 
expensive. Mm-hmm. So from that point of view, we're quite grateful for the position that we're in compared to like other people that are obviously, you know, having financial hardship and can't afford their rent and their mortgage and they've got no support. So mm-hmm. yeah, we're quite blessed to be where we are, I think. Good. And what about the people that work for, what about your, your business, but then also then for the people that work for with and for you? So we shut Dolly on the 25th of March temporarily. Um, all of the staff had to be furloughed, um, which was harsh because it was quite a difficult decision, but we knew from a safety point of view, we didn't really have much choice. And ultimately, because our business is so personal and we're obviously having contact with multiple people throughout the day, it was safer for us to take the furlough option, um, temporarily close the company and and make sure that the dollies were safe, really. Mm-hmm. Um, so we haven't actually had any work, um, apart from me obviously doing, doing the admin behind the scenes. We haven't done any physical work since then. So, yeah, it's been, um, I think it's been difficult for the dollies. Um, mm-hmm. They're quite, uh, well, they are a very hard-working team, mm. and they do work their socks off. So to kind of be told to just stop for a lot of them, it's probably caused quite a few mental health issues, I think, mm-hmm. in regards to um, obviously being so busy one week and then having nothing the next. And I think a lot of us have, the first two weeks was, oh, no work. Yeah. And then the reality of actually becoming homeschoolers as teachers because we've got children, which is a job in, in itself. I would definitely not go into the career of teaching for love <laughs> your money. Um, <laughs> I think that and obviously the amalgamation of being at home with people that you're not used to being at home with, um, you know, spending 24-7 with people, not being able to just nip out for some fresh air. I think all of that has probably taken its toll on all of us individually. Um, luckily, we're quite a strong group of ladies and we all talk regularly every day. And I think we've probably drawn source from each other because we're all different and we've all got our different personalities and there's different age groups and there's some that have got kids and some that have got older children that have grown up and some that have got little ones like me so it's been um it's been good to have that support around each other I think and we've all grown quite close um but we definitely want to get back to work soon there's logistics that are bad in regards to childcare, but we all definitely definitely want to get back to work as soon as we can and when it's safe to do so and what about for your customers? I know um, I was a gardener years ago and a lot of my customers were, you know, in their 70s, 80s and above. And for some of them that I was the only person apart from maybe the milkman that they, they saw each week. Have you got people like that though? Yeah, so the majority, to be honest, I'd say the majority of got we've got all different types of customers. We've got younger, older families, single guys, single ladies, um, all sorts really. Um, the ones that we would put into our vulnerable category, so there's probably about eight or nine of them all together, we've kept in contact. And I know that a few of us have tried to do um, food deliveries and just keep in contact so that at least they've got someone there. Um, we've got one guy in particular who's not had a telly for 34 years, hasn't got a mobile phone, wouldn't know what the internet is. He's very um, old school. Mm. so he had no way of getting any food or anything like that so he would be put into the vulnerable category so we made sure that obviously he gets anything he needs he's got a lot of support from his neighbours and his um, brother and sister-in-law live down the road so the older ones we check in with luckily they've got family that are helping them as well Um, but it's quite sad you kind of realise how vulnerable they are Um, I think from a point of view of our clients, we've had, I've had quite a few messages not asking for us to come back because I've been quite clear about when we will come back and basically that's when it's safe. Mm-hmm. But I think that they're missing the luxury of having a cleaner and having to do it themselves. I think they probably appreciate how hard we work now, which is good because <laughs> um, it is hard work. It's physically draining. Um, so yeah, it's just we've kept in contact with all of our clients, and we've had good messages. Some have continued to pay us, um, which is oh, lovely. Um, I think they realised that being a small company, we didn't automatically have the financial support from the government. As much as it kind of sounded easier to everyone else, 
in principle actually trying to get hold of the benefits and cash and you know the loans and things was actually quite difficult Mm -hmm. um so yeah it's been good we've got i think this is we've got some really lovely clients that have all been really supportive and know that when it's ready we'll when it's the right time we will come Mm -hmm. back would you like to talk us through the process of the, like the financial and the administrative stuff that you've had to is it different for you yourself as opposed to your employees for me personally it wasn't too i panicked in the beginning because i thought oh i'm as a director of a company you automatically think where does my salary come from um and i'm lucky enough to be um an employee of my own company so i was able to take furlough but in the beginning that wasn't guaranteed and there was a lot of directors of companies that actually were like well, what does that mean for us like i know there's a lot of people that have that pay themselves in dividends and they're not allowed to get that money but i don't personally take any money out of the business i just pay myself a basic salary so fortunately that went in my favor um but we had problems in regards to the fact that the um Cibless loan the corona interruption business loan um we didn't hear anything about that and that's what seven weeks later um i think the problem with that was because the banks were guaranteeing the 20 percent. the credit checks were quite difficult um so i don't actually know of anyone that got that loan luckily we put our overdrafts up before the week before lockdown because i kind of knew that even though the government had said something about the furlough scheme coming into practice that whole system would take quite a while to actually implement and I always wanted to make sure that the girls got paid regardless. So fortunately that I kind of had a plan A, B and C, plan A being the overdraft, plan B being the Sibless loan and plan C being the actual furlough payments from the government coming in. Um, We actually only got our furlough payment for March and April last Tuesday. So I've had to pay out two lots of wages before um, we've actually had any support from anywhere. Um, we managed to get one of the bounce back loans last week, which was really good. Um, I think a lot, lot more businesses were able to um, access that a lot easier um, because of the fact that the credit checks were quite minimal. And also long term, it worked out better because the payment plan was better. You don't have to pay anything back for a year. Um, then the interest rate is like two and a half percent. So. Um, from a business point of view that was good to have that as the backup um and i'm glad that i took my bank manager's advice and put my overdraft up as much as i could um so that it guaranteed me at least three months worth of payments Mm -hmm. so long term how how long i know we don't really know when this is all going to end or or improve how long do you think it will take you to financially kind of reset and be kind of where you were say a couple of months ago I'd probably say at least two to three years because if you think about the fact that obviously now that we're having the furlough payments coming back in it does mean that we obviously have our wages being paid back so I'm not out of pocket in that sense now. Um, The problem we've got to gauge is when we do return which will probably be within the next three to four weeks are we going back to the customers that we had before pre-lockdown you know because you've got to look at factors from them financially things might change for them um we are still pretty much a luxury not a necessity um i think that's probably going to change i think if anything it probably could go the other way because we've all become a little bit more german clean conscious in the last seven weeks so i'm hoping that from a business point of view being in domestic cleaning I think we'll probably get more business come from this. Uh, so long term, it could be, it, it could, you know, every silver lining, I suppose it could be, um, you know, the making of the company and, you know, we could catapult us into being bigger than we are. Um, financially, it's quite, I still have that bank loan that I still have to pay back. Um, yes, it's minimal payments and they give you a lot longer than a normal standard bank loan, but it's still money that we've had to invest on things like PPE, um, you know, additional cleaning products. So, you know, you're looking at quite a large outlay before we've even stepped back in foot in inside one of our customers' houses. So all of that and extra training that we've been doing, you know, all, it's all cost and 
it's things that we wouldn't have had to pay out beforehand because we wouldn't have to be working at that level. Um, so yeah, I'd probably say at least two to three years, really. I think the loan will probably take about five years to pay back realistically. Um, so that's obviously something that we're tied to, but it does give us the security that if things are different when we go back and we do lose a certain percentage of our client base, then at least we've got enough money in the pot to kind of use that as a bit of a springboard and, you know, use it towards recruitment, additional training. Um, yeah. Who knows? It is quite uncertain, but I like to think that if I've managed to go 10 years and I can get through a pandemic, then I can probably go a lot longer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, just in terms of going, start starting up again, are you, just going to like what how are you going to make that decision are you going to just listen to the government and as soon as you're allowed to or are you going to kind of weigh up with 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 other things or like what's your thinking on actually starting up again so technically in our sector we could have gone back to work from last wednesday um from my personal point of view i think it's a little bit too soon i think there's a potential that if you look at the statistics in regards to um, the infection rate in the last kind of 24, 48 hours, the fact that people have decided that they can go out, which is fine. We are allowed to go out for more exercise, but I do think that there is a potential peak possibly coming. And I wouldn't want to undo all the hard work that we've kind of done as a collective for the last seven to eight weeks for nothing. Mm -hmm. um, so in regards to returning, I think it will probably be more than likely the middle of June. Mm -hmm. um, like I said earlier, we've got other factors, other factors being that a lot of our dollies have got children who are of school age. And if they don't have childcare, as in school or nurseries, then they can't actually have the capacity to work. So it's been a bit of a logistical nightmare in regards to what manpower we've got We've also had to speak to clients in regards to what risk category they fit into, if it's safe to go to clean at their property, if they're shielded, um, all sorts of different factors. And it's kind of weighing up who would be classed as a priority, who we would be able to physically go and see because it wouldn't be um, a high risk property. Mm -hmm. Then making sure that all the PPE is arriving, which is a slow process because as soon as Boris decided to say that we could all potentially go back to work, everyone started to order PPE and prices literally tripled within hours. So it's difficult. I think when you're not part of the NHS, obviously, and you're having to self-fund and self-source this PPE, um, it's actually quite a difficult process. So as much as we have actually only been told as a sector that we only really need to wear gloves as PPE, for me personally, the girls are having their own masks um, and aprons and disposable gloves. They won't be working in pairs anymore. They'll be working on their own. We've obviously invested in quite expensive antibacterial products that we, we've always worked at a quite a high level in regards to cross-contamination and germs, mainly because of my OCD, but it's a whole new ball game now the process of how we will go back and clean will be completely different at least for the next six months because ultimately i suppose as a sector we're being looked at to potentially help eradicate corona yeah, COVID. Yeah. so for us our benchmark has been set very very high now in regards to the processes that we clean to the training that the girls are having to undertake to make sure that they're you know working safely um, not just for them but also for the client so yeah, it's, diff it's going to be a very different six months, but it's, it, it is what it is and we have to carry on regardless. Mm. I'm surprised you're not surrounded by boxes of PPE. I imagine they're hiding somewhere, are they? <laughs> they're actually at my mum and dad's. Okay. I've been there. <laughs> Funny enough, I've been there today because another load arrived. and They've got a garage and we haven't got a garage here. Um, so I kind of agreed about three weeks ago and I started to bulk buy stuff um, in exchange for doing a tip run from my dad. Did I possibly borrow a small section of the garage, which he agreed to, 
until it was like the seventh delivery and these huge boxes arriving. And he's like, what is that? I said, oh, that's the cleaner bottles that we've got. They're the big bottles. And he's like, is there any more? And I was like, yeah, there's quite a bit more today. So yeah, it's currently all sat in my mum and dad's garage, stored safely out of direct sunlight, nice and securely. Excellent. <laughs> how are you feeling today, just generally? kind of, Is today a good day or a bad day? Or how, how have you been? I always like to think every day is a good day. Um, that always doesn't ring true, obviously. Mm. Um, today's a good day because it, and I, I do do a lot of um, gratification, uh, gratitude and things like that. I'm quite into my um, kind of self-care and I try and give this to the dollies. Like I'm in the middle of doing a mental health course for employees um, because all my girls are ladies and they've got stresses of being mums and partners and and I want to be able to support. So I try and think that every day is a good day. Um, at the end of the day, I'm healthy. I'm here. My children are healthy. My partner's healthy. My mother-in-law is healthy. My dad, who is shielded, who's just got over lung cancer, is healthy. Um, the sun is shining. Um, yes, I can't do the things that I wanted to do, and I've had my freedom taken away. But actually, I do believe that it's quite nice to look at it as a bit of a reset. You know, someone said to us, okay, you're all going to stop and you're just going to rest and you're not going to have any stress of work. I'll even financially support you in a weird way, i.e. the furlough scheme in my sense. Um, and you're going to spend time with your family. You know, we won't get this time again. And I always say to Lily, my 10 year old, like this is, this is, a, this is a historical moment for us because they won't ever get to see this again. Yes, they miss their friends. Yes, there's not the routine of the classroom. But some of the things that we've learned as a family, we would never have done. Like, Mother Half's been making baking cakes. I don't think in the 15, 16 years that we've been together, I would ever have said at the beginning that Paul would have made a Victoria sponge cake. And it was edible. It was really nice. Um, Lily's got a whole garden of vegetables. Again, something that we've always wanted to do because... It looks cool in a magazine, but actually we've all, we've been doing these things that because we've had the time to do them and we've had time to fill. Um, so, yeah, I think gratification and being grateful every morning for something, today is a good day. Good. Now, it does make you really focus on, because you could easily get kind of caught up in all the, what, the things you haven't got, but it does really make you focus, uh, make you kind of think glass half full, I think. I think we should. I think we should have a lockdown probably every five years. Yeah, that would be good. Where we just literally stop yeah. for maybe two or three weeks. Everyone takes holiday. We all get paid for it, and it's amazing. <laughs> we just sit and stop. All the shops get shut. You can't just nip out to here there. You can't go clothes shopping. It's just you just literally stop and appreciate what you've actually got in front of you, rather than what you haven't got. Yeah, it'd be like 1980s Sundays. Yeah, just nice and chilled and just no stress, no drama. So um, what inspiring stories or actions have you seen or heard since the pandemic started? Well, one of the things probably that resonates the most is when this first happened, we had a post go up on a group that I admin about being a volunteer in our community. And I signed up to it because I thought, well, I'm quite lucky because... I've got my mum, my mother-in-law here. Um, Paul was still working back then. I would have time to do things like go and get prescriptions, go and get some food drop-offs, go to the food bank, blah, blah, blah. So I signed up and I've continued and still am. Even today, I went and got prescriptions for people that can't get out. So when I say locked down, I mean those that are shielded or have no family or friends near them, have no transport, have no means of getting those basic necessities. And it's been lovely because through the community, through the Alliance, I've met lots of other people that I wouldn't have probably had contact with who have gone like above and beyond what you would expect a volunteer to do. And we've met some lovely people. Um, we've met some absolutely amazing older people that are just so lovely and so thankful to have someone there that they can ring at any point and go, I can't get my prescription and I really need it or I've run out of this, could you pop, you know, little things like that. You know, we've managed to get people in contact with Meals and Wheels. 
we've given people financial support through the council and Hampshire County Council that they wouldn't have known about because they wouldn't know where to look because they might not have the internet. So it's all of those things. So I think the one thing that I've probably been inspired by is how when we actually put our minds that we can put other people first. I think when you get pushed into a corner and you all have to kind of, you're all in the same corner together, you do find that people that you may never come into contact with before do appear and just help people out. It doesn't take much just to, you know, it's even just to ring someone and just to say, how are you today? Like the people like the kids of our clients that don't have any family apart from his brother who's got his children, but they live away. He's got no, he's never been married. He's got no children. You know, just that phone call to say, how are you doing? You know, we could be on the phone for an hour just chatting about rubbish, but it's just that communication. And the Alliance has been good because it's got people in contact with other people in the community. So, yeah, I think it's been nice to see how much people will come together when they've given the opportunity. So how do you hope it will shape the future? We were saying this yesterday, funny enough, me and Paul in the garden. Um, in an ideal world, I'd like it to be for people just to realise what they've got and what they and not what they haven't got. I think as a society, especially with media, we're showing all these different images of what we should be like. You know, the perfect parent, the perfect teacher, you know, doing all this baking. You know, it is quite it's quite mind boggling and if you're not strong minded it can be quite um overpowering and you do question yourself so i'd like to think as a as a whole we'll just learn to appreciate each other a bit more and just to slow down like there's no rush to get whatever you desire you can have everything you want in front of you and it's not materialistic it could be your family it could be having your health um you know the environment my brother was showing me the other day about um how obviously we haven't got any planes flying so our airways are lovely and clean and clear mm. and it's just it's just mad when you see pictures of how it's like our earth has been repairing and it would be a really big waste if we didn't take something from this whole situation and keep running with it mm. you know the fact that we have had to survive without doing our car journeys you can walk places you can even get on a bike you know and you can see the people that are on bikes that have never been on bikes before because you, you, you give them like an extra five foot when you go around them in the car because they're wobbling but at least they're doing it you know like i've started running again i hate running but there's nothing better than just getting out there of an evening and just chilling out and yeah yeah It'd be nice if, if a world, if we could actually just appreciate that we've been given this opportunity to do a bit of a reset, to think about the fact that the planet will not keep going if we don't make changes. Fab, Kelly. Thanks so much. No worries. Thanks no for having me. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening to Positive Negative. Don't forget, you can follow us on Twitter at PosNegative or find us on Facebook. And join in the conversation using the hashtag PosNegative. You can help us to grow by leaving us a review and sharing this episode with your friends and followers. You'll also find links to what we've talked about in the show notes or by visiting positivenegativepodcast.com.